Ragboy from Wake 9, I hope you're all staying safe. We just recently got back out on the boat. It's just so nice to be out in the lake and I hope you're able to enjoy that. I've been getting so many questions after the last video I did on how to wait your boat. First is where do I get this choice Barbie wake surf boat, Walmart. And the other question is where do I put my lead? I was planning on a second episode, how to find your best pitch and roll. And then my third episode was going to be where do I put my lead? But since everybody bought their boats because I got way behind doing this, because of the coronavirus. I'm gonna go straight to three, but I have to give you a couple of, of things first before I tell you exactly where to put your lead, okay? First, do you need lead and why? I had a couple people comment when I said I'm gonna be doing this video and said just buy a Mastercraft. Like in other words, if you buy a Mastercraft, you don't need lead. All of these new boats, well, most of them at least, should be that you just fill up their ballast tanks and you can go make a good wave. And I would say generally that that is true. I know on our boat, we don't, you don't need lead. You could use it without lead and you're gonna make a really good weight. But I have a bit of a weight problem. I need more push. Even without it, I've surfed it stock and it surfs great. But when I have the extra push, it just gives me, it just feels nice. But, and there's always a big but. I think everybody needs a little bit of lead. Since one, for leverage, I'll explain that. Two, it helps you optimize your ballast system to get the most out of your current system. And I'm gonna thoroughly explain that. I got my lead, which are bullets in these uh, Walgreens containers. I got my notes, my tasty beverage, and Barbie waiting for me here. Let's talk about your best pitch and roll for your boat. On all of the Supras and Moombas pretty much that I've been on, approximately nine degrees pitch. Okay, remember pitch is uh, bow up. I got a boat right here, I don't need to use my hand. And then roll is the list. On all the Supra Moombas, about nine degrees of pitch gives me the my about what I consider the best wave. When you go more pitch, you're gonna go bigger, meatier, more push, but you're gonna shorten the wave a bit. Less pitch, you're going to make a longer wave, but you're gonna lose some push. Like Centurions and some other boats like that, sometimes they require more pitch, you gotta get that bow up higher. Some that are less, you have to find that for your boat. So you're looking for good push, good length, and you gotta find that happy medium. Now from the factories, the Supras and Moombas are usually set to around seven or so. I like it a little higher. But that's totally up to you. You find out what works best for you. For the pitch, this is pretty much universal on most boats, is because of the rotation of the prop, you need a little more list when you're surfing goofy, about three degrees surfing goofy. And then regular, about one degree or negative one. You need a little more list to one side because of the rotation of the prop. That's been my experience and it's pretty much been universal. Find your best pitch and your best roll. Now, the way I find the best roll is really simple. On most boats, they should all provide a clean wave. If they don't make a clean wave, well, I'm not gonna tell you to go buy another the boat. List the boat over and the wave will get cleaner. And then when you go towards flat, it'll start to get dirty. The best roll, in my opinion, go to where you have just a little bit of list to where the wave just cleans up. If you go back a little bit, it's gonna get dirty. Now you say, well, why don't you just go more then? It'll be even better. It's not. The reason is when you list over too much, the wave changes. When you just have enough list to clean it, usually you're gonna have the cleanest face. When you list over more, you'll get like this double wave, like a double lip on most boats. My experience is the best wave is always as level as you can have your boat. Now there's other questions like, what do I set my trim plates at? I mean, my surf system plates at? I like to just keep those at the default. At least on the Supras and Moombas, I found those to be great settings. You can play with those, but you start introducing so many variables into the equation and you don't really make the wave better. You want those plates fully engaged. If they're not fully engaged, it's like you're adjusting your boat to make a wave. You're not fully making the wave. So you're not gonna get as much push Think of it this way. If your plate is only half engaged, then you're basically adjusting a wave from that point that is only half made. That's a simpli simplistic way of saying it. Fully engage your plates like they are from the default, leave them there, and let's adjust using pitch and roll. I have found that to make the best wave. Same thing goes from your wake plate. The wave plate should be set to a neutral position. On our Super Zamumba, uh, it's 50. It's not down, it's not up, it's right in the middle. I like using that. Sometimes I still will adjust it on the fly if I need to make an adjustment. But remember, all that plate does is designed to do is to raise your pitch or lower your pitch. Well, let's do that with weight. You want your hull to do the work in making your wave because it is the hull that makes the beautiful wave. The plate, all it can do is get in the way of that and you don't want it to get in the way of that. So just leave it at 50 and let's adjust the weight. And this is where auto wake is really great because it allows you to make these adjustments by pushing a button that it moves the weight and then you get that beautiful way. We've gotten to the point where we now know what the best pitch and roll for our boat is. We have our surf system fully engaged, whatever side. We have our list, let's say we're on goofy, we're doing three degrees and we have our pitch at nine degrees, that's what we like. 
like. And then when I go, I, maybe I'll put it to nine and a half. I want a little more push. Not so worried about the length. It doesn't matter what percentage your ballast is at. Because remember, if all of my ballast is 100% full, and most boats usually have a ballast section in the starboard rear, port rear, and then one forward. If they're all 100% full, the boat is going to be at whatever pitch and roll. When a person moves around, even with those things 100%, it alters that pitch and roll. What those percentages are don't matter. What matters is what your pitch and roll is. Let's say you have people sitting in the boat. Let's assume we're going out with your normal setup. In other words, let's say your family is two parents and a couple kids. People go surfing and you do this all the time. 80% of the time, that's how you're going. Maybe you take another family with you, whatever. Now you guys go and you put the boat at nine degrees of pitch and three degrees of roll. And then you notice that your surf system says your, your bow is 50% full. Why is your bow 50% full? When, when your best wave is at nine degrees and you might say, well, we want all the weight. Let's put 100% in there. Now you're down to about six degrees of pitch, okay? It's not gonna be the best way. And so you're gonna go, oh. And so then you're gonna put your weight plate way up. And you're gonna try to, you know, artificially get the bow up. And that works, but it's not gonna be as good as if you get that uh, pitch up and leaving your plate even. And this, the inverse is even more important. Let's say you're at 100% and you want to, your, your bow is up to 12 degrees or something like that, which this is rare, but let's say that was the case. You don't want to be putting that wake plate all the way down to force the bow down. You're creating turbulence. It doesn't make the wave as clean as if your wake plate is in a neutral position and you adjust the weight to get it there. That's where the lead comes in. If you're running your perfect pitch and roll and your front ballast is only 50%, what do you do? You have to add more weight to the rear so that when you fill up the front, you get to nine degrees. And your goal is to set your weight so that when you're at your perfect pitch and roll, your front ballast should be close to 90%. You might have 4,000 pounds of water ballast in your boat and probably seven or 800 of that is for the front. So if you have 44,000 pounds of ballast, but you're running around with 50% of ballast to get your perfect setup, you know, you're 400 pounds shy. Does your boat need lead? No. But if you have 4,000 pounds of ballast, but you're always running around with 3,600 pounds because you don't have the front filled up, you're not getting the most out of your system. That's where the lead comes in. Just a few hundred pounds. We talked about leverage. What do I mean by that? 400 pounds in the bow of your boat in your front system. You think, okay, I got to put 400 pounds in the back. Not necessarily. The way this works, if you look here, when I push down on the back of the boat, it goes up, the tip goes up. And if I push down on the front of the boat, you see the tip goes up. If you kind of notice, there's like a fulcrum right here. This is the point that the boat is rotating. If you understand, you can Google about levers. The closer the weight is to the center or the fulcrum, the less impact it has on the pitch. If we put weight all the way to one end, it has maximum leverage. What we're trying to do is to get our pitch up and we're down 400 pounds on most ballast systems. Think about this. If you look and find out where your front bag is, sometimes on our super, it's pretty far forward, but I've seen on some boats, it's in the center. It's not even in the bow. And you might look and find out that your front ballast, it shows you on the image on your screen, like it's in the bow, but it's not. It's like right here in the center of the boat. That weight has very little leverage on your pitch. The other thing you have to remember is that if you have 50% weight in the bow and you pitch up, well, where do you think that water is going to go? You have a long tank and you're now riding bow up, it's gonna go to the back. Using lead to help get you the exact pitch and roll you want and maximizing your ballast system is awesome. And I have friends on some of the best boats out there like my Super SE 550 or the SA 550, two of the best boats that, that I know of, but there's a lot of other great ones by Mastercraft and, and Correctcraft and Centurion. Think of the top of the line boats from all these manufacturers. And everybody that I know that is a hardcore wake surfer, they all use some lead. Some are crazy, like 1,000 or 2,000 pounds and I don't think you need that much but you know, do whatever you want to do. My point is everybody uses a little bit of lead to tune. You're tuning to get the maximum out of your system. And also let's say you're a big fat guy like me and you sit on one side of the boat all the time and you don't have another big fat guy to offset you or enough people. So maybe you might put a little more lead on, on one side just to, to counterbalance you. Sometimes you'll get a bunch of people that get in your boat. They're all sitting in the bow. If you have a, a little bit of lead in the bow, you can move it to the back. That way you don't have to tell those people to move. You're going to adjust your lead accounting for how you normally ride with your peeps so that you're always getting almost 100% ballast and your perfect pitch and roll. And if you do that, you're gonna have an incredibly consistent wake that is always great. You might be out there going like the guy with the Mastercraft. I got my Mastercraft. I can feel the wave, man. I just, 
You know, I'm on the boat, I don't need no pitch and roll, I can just feel it, great. And I'm not making fun of Mastercraft, it just happened to be that one guy who made that comment. I, I think that I have been doing this for long enough to where when I get on a boat, I can pretty much tell right away what I need to do to fix the wave. But I still adjust my pitch and roll because I go to Ottawa, boom, boom, set it, go, and I'm done. And it's perfect every time. Your percentages of your weights don't matter. They're never gonna give you a consistent wake. What gives you a consistent wake is to set that pitch and roll and to measure and adjust it. If you maximize your weight with just a few hundred pounds of lead using the leverage like I told you, when we put lead in the back, we always put two 50 pound bags in the far, 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 far back corner. I mean, it can't go farther back. There's like fiberglass and lake. We always put two bags in each corner so we have that leverage back here. The rest of the lead, we put right on top of the fulcrum to just give us an extra weight. That's basically the formula. Put your lead forward or back to help optimize what I said so you get the right pitch and you keep your ballast at 100%, okay? And the rest, if you have extra, just to weight the whole board down, just put it right in the middle, equally on both sides. I do want to give you one really important safety tip. This is really important. If you put lead in your boat and you keep it in there to tow, be especially careful that you don't overweight the rear of the boat to offset the 60-40 ratio when you're towing. You could get in an accident. I've done it. One time I thought of the rear bag had uh, emptied and it didn't. And I got on the freeway and I started going and man, that thing started swaying. And luckily my truck has a, a sway control feature and it caught it, slowed me down and even before I could react and I was fine, but that was pretty scary. I have found, and you need to check with your own boat and your trailer, if I add the 200 pounds in each corner and the rest of the lead in the middle, that it doesn't alter my towing, but be sensitive to that. Be careful, make sure. Um, sometimes what I've done in the past is if I have two bags in each corner here, the rest in the middle, then before I tow, I just take two bags from the middle and I move them to the bow. Then I know I'm totally balanced. Be safe. That is how we play with our lead to make the best possible wave for Barbie. Go out, get yourself. I love Lead Wake the best. I he's a great guy. His lead is sealed, doesn't ever get my boat messed up. I've had lead that, that it's because it's actually steel that gets rust and it gets in your boat. I've never had an issue like that with Lead Wake. It's fairly priced. I think the US Postal Service hates them. Buy 50 pound bags. You know, I would say start with about 500 pounds and you know, go from there, do whatever you want to do. But everybody could use 500 pounds of lead, I think. Next week, I want to take you out on the boat. I'm going to actually show you making these adjustments and what they look like on the wave. Hopefully, we're going to be doing the polar bear event in October and maybe we'll get to see some of you out there. Talk to you later.